triple cooked chips doused in mayo, delectable waffles covered in chocolate, and more beers than you can shake a stick at. There are a lot of reasons why visiting Flanders is so good, but there's one main reason, and that's Heligan Bergs Climbs. That's right. There are hundreds dotted around the region, all of which have been entered into folklore due to races like the Tour of Flanders, E3, and Umlot Het Nusblad. But the question is, which ones are the best? Well, here at Cyclist, we thought we'd help you out, and we've compiled our top five climbs in the Flanders region. Now, sneaking in at number five on our list is the Tyneberg. 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 Translate that from Flemish to English, though, and apparently it means tough hill. So I've been told. But I'm willing to bet a pound note that you know it as the Boonenberg. That's because this was the favourite climb of one of Flanders and Cycling's most cherished sons. Tom Boonen. Tomica used the slopes of the Tyneberg to attack on four out of his five E3 victories and he would often use the Tyneberg as the place to spice it up while racing the Tour of Flanders. Now this isn't one of Flanders most difficult Hellingen. At 513 meters long and with an average gradient of 6.3%, it isn't one of the more difficult climbs in the Flanders region. But because this climb was so important during the career of Tom Boonen, one of Flanders' favorite children, it deserves its place in our list today. Now, in at number four on our list today, is the Kemmelberg. Now the Kemmelberg is the highest point in West Flanders, 159 meters above sea level. And due to its height and its proximity to the French border, which is just a few kilometers away in that direction, it was a highly significant battleground during the First World War, with unfortunately 120,000 soldiers losing their life on both sides of the conflict. Now, the Kemmelberg is the only climb on today's list that doesn't feature in the Tour of Flanders monument race. Instead, since the 1960s, it has been the centerpiece of the Belgian legendary semi-classic Ghent Wevelgem. And in the most recent running in 2021, this climb was used on three occasions, twice from the Belvedere end and once from Usser. Both ascents average 9%, both ascents also go over 20% and both are really horrible to descend. Now, you may think, why am I talking about descending a cobbled climb? Well, until 2007, organizers of Ghent Wevelgem not only sent the peloton up the Kemmelberg, but also down it. Luckily, organizers have since seen sense, but nevertheless, this climb still deserves its place in our list today. And if you don't believe us, well, how about visiting the restaurant halfway up the Belvedere end, as I have it on very good authority that they do a knockout more freight. And in at number three on our list is this, the Paterberg. Now, cast your minds back to the 1980s, you know, when we all wore shell suits, permed our hair and Club Tropicana drinks were free. Well, there was a Flemish farmer who wrote a petition to the local council asking for the climb outside his farm to be paved not with tarmac but with cobbles. Why? In the hope that his favourite cycling race, the Tour of Flanders, would pass by. Lo and behold, the Kloisbergen council listened to the farmer's request and in 1986, after being freshly paved with cobbles, the Paterberg made its debut in the Tour of Flanders. For 26 years, it was just a n of a climb until 2012, when organizers of Flanders decided to rejig the race route, making the Paterberg the final climb of the race before the new finish in nearby Udenard. 
350 meters of horrible cobbles that burst the lungs and the knees, getting up to 22% in gradient. It truly is a climb worthy of our list. I tell you what, they take their cycling half seriously here in Flanders because when the Kappel Moor or the Moor van Gerritsbergen or just the Moor was removed from the Tour of Flanders in 2012, local fans held a fake funeral on the climb's slopes. After all, this and the Bosberg, which is nearby, had been the final two climbs in the Tour of Flanders since the early 1970s and had become an iconic setting for the race. An iconic climb the Mur truly is. It's 900 meters long in which you will barge, bobble and bounce your way up the cobblestones with no cobblestone being similar to the next. Eventually, if you manage to make the top without coming to a standstill, you will reach your hacienda, this, the chapel of Our Lady of Udberg. And as for the locals, they can feel appeased because in 2017, the Tour of Flanders organizers saw sense and reintroduced the Kappel Mur, the Mur van Gerritsbergen, the Mur, to the Tour of Flanders, albeit 95 kilometers from the finish. So it no longer has the same impact on the race result. But this is an iconic climb and worthy of being our second best climb in Flanders. Now in at number one, top of the charts, the top climb in Flanders, it's the Koppenberg. Of course it is. Any ascent tough enough to make the great Eddie Merckx have to walk to the summit needs to be respected, revered and feared in equal measure. Now let's do some more translation. Local cycling fans call cobbles Kinderkoffen, which apparently translates to baby's heads, which means that Koppenberg kind of means children's heads hill. I know it's terrifying, isn't it? I've also done some math while I'm here. 66,240 cobbles across 690 meters of this climb. The top gradient, 21%, the average gradient, 11%. Now, getting to the top of this climb in one go and in one piece is something that you should genuinely be proud of because it isn't always that way. Just ask Jesper Skibby. The young Dane was out front on his own at the Tour of Flanders in 1987. He was slowly making his way up the Koppenberg when eventually, he just couldn't go anymore and he fell over. But when he fell over, the race commissaire's BMW E28 5 Series was just behind him. And knowing that there were riders coming up from the rear, the car kept going. And what happened when that happened? Well, they ran over Jesper's back wheel, narrowly missing his feet. Now that incident was so shocking that the Koppenberg was taken out of the Tour of Flanders for ages until there was a restoration of the cobbles. Now it's back in the Tour of Flanders, but we don't think there's been much restoration at all because this is the hardest climb in Flanders and the worthy recipient of the number one climb in Flanders, according to Cyclist Magazine. So there we have it, cycling fans, our top five climbs in Flanders, according to us here at Cyclist Magazine. Now, if you disagree with us, which I know some of you wholeheartedly will do, I know there are a lot of big 10 boss fans out there, make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments below. If you don't do that, also make sure to like this video, share it with your cobble-loving friends, and of course, subscribe to the Cyclist YouTube channel.